being monarch in world history. As of today, Her Majesty's been on the throne for 70 years and 127 days. Now, only Louis XIV of France has reigned for longer. His reign began when he was just four years old and lasted for more than 72 years. Incredible, isn't it? Amazing. Congratulations. The Isle of Man, TT, came to a close last night, but tragically five competitors died over the last two weeks of racing. That is the highest death toll at the contest in more than 30 years. Yes, the Welsh rider Mark Perslow, Frenchman César Chanel, uh, Northern Ireland's Davy Morgan all died in crashes, as did Roger and Bradley Stockton, a father and son from Crewe. Ben Croucher has this report. Motorsport provides few tests, quite like the Isle of Man TT. More than 100 competitors returned for racing this year. Five never made it home. The speeds approaching 200 miles an hour on 37 and three quarter miles of closed public roads. The circuit is one of the most iconic in motor racing and one of the most deadly. This year's TT has been very much marked by the, the tragic incidents that we've had and that more than anything else will probably be the way that they share in particular is remembered. And from the start, it's plunging away down Bray Hill. First held in 1907, the Tourist Trophy has long attracted riders and fans the world over. For many, the TT is the Isle of Man. But since its inception, 265 riders have lost their lives in races on the island. 1982, the last fatality-free year. Despite the risks, its appeal continues to endure. The challenge of the course and the fact that it's so long, there's nothing else like it in the world. That's the appeal to the riders because they're pushing themselves, they're, they're pushing their machines uh, to the, the limits of what the, they're capable of. It's how it's always been. Uh, I don't see that that's going to change anytime soon. Organisers told the BBC the loss of any rider is felt deeply across the event. The Isle of Man TT races work with all necessary services to try and fully understand all risks and how best to mitigate them. The entire organising team will look for every possible way to learn from each incident and near miss in a bid to separate inherent risk from unnecessary risk. But on a course lined with lampposts, trees and brick walls, can it ever be safe? The reality is that while we can make the TT safer, we can't make it safer and we can never make it as safe as, say, MotoGP or Formula One or, or comparable circuit, uh, championships that run on circuits. The final race on Saturday passed without fatality, but not incident. One rider was airlifted to hospital. Competitors are well aware of the ever-present dangers. We know there's a chance for fatality. We accept that. Our families accept that. But unfortunately, it's the love of the sport, and, and, and that's what we live for. And it's what they die for. For the ultimate challenge in motorcycling continues to carry the ultimate price. Ben Croucher, BBC News. Well, Liam Beckett is a sports journalist and broadcaster who used to cover motorcycling, but stepped away from the sport in 2018 after a spate of deaths, including that of his friend William Dunlop. Liam, thank you so much for joining us on Breakfast this morning. You fell in love with motorcycle racing in your teenage years, but it's been a roller coaster of emotions for you, hasn't it? Yeah, good morning. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's a sport I love dearly, but it can be so unforgiving if, if something goes wrong. There's no doubt about that because we've just had two weeks at the Isle of Man and of some incredible highs, but sadly, as we all know now, some heartbreaking lows, uh, as bad as I can ever remember, to be honest. Can you take us inside that, that mindset, that mentality of, of a rider who decides, even with the events of the past few weeks and those tragic deaths, to continue to compete because of the love of this sport when, when they are risking their life? Yeah, to be honest, uh, Tina, they're a different breed of people. They, they, they are people who, who love to be involved in what I would only consider to be known as a, an extreme sport. We have several extreme sports uh, like mountaineering and, and, uh, and boxing and, and different ones that where you know there's there's always a high risk of injury. And, you know, any any death in, in, in sport, even one, is, is deeply regrettable. But to have a five like we have had in the past fortnight at the Isle of Man TT races, it's just totally unacceptable. And 
And I know the organisers try so hard uh, to, to make it safer, but they will never ever, and you just played a, 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 a chat there where it said, they will never be able to make it totally safe. I think that plays a part in how the riders get the thrill and the buzz out of competing. Uh, certainly they have a fear as well. They all have a mindset, to be honest, where they feel that it just will not happen to me. Uh, you, you say it's unacceptable. In your view, then, what should happen? I think that, you know, there's no point in just saying these things are regrettable and moving on to the next race. Moves have got to be... Like, I'm a human being and I've got a heart and I've got a family and, and dear knows I've lost some very, very close friends in the Dunlop family here. I'm from a wee town in Northern Ireland called Balamoni the home of the Dunlop family, and, and they provided world champions, British champions, Irish champions. They've won international events all over the world, but it's claimed the lives of three of that family. So I, I take that very personally. <coughs> I feel it, it deeply. Uh, it's something that, uh, that it, it causes me to have a love-hate relationship with the sport because Michael Dunlop, uh, son of the late Robert Justice, just this week, uh, brought his total to 21 runs at the TT by doing a double. Uh, and, and he continues to race on. And I was on such a high when Michael did that because I love the lad. Uh, and then just literally minutes after that, we lost a rider from home here called Davy Morgan. And suddenly then that hate came in for a few minutes as well, where I absolutely hated the sport for taking somebody that I knew personally and and held in the very highest of esteem. Mm. It's just something that it's difficult to explain to people. And I know a lot of people on the outside think these people are absolute lunatics, that they pull on crash helmets and they, and they go out racing. But they're not. They're very intelligent young men and, and women, actually, as well. And, and, and I know a lot of them personally. I know the road race family have been going to the TT, I think, for some 30-odd years. Uh, and it's difficult to explain because you do get a high, but yeah. you also certainly get those lows that are totally, as I say, unacceptable. Of course. And, and Liam, you mentioned being on the outside. I think a lot of people on the outside will be taking in the events of the last few weeks and be thinking to themselves, you know, in what other sport would this be allowed to happen? Why is it allowed to continue? And especially when it's such a shocking statistic. And, and also shocking is the fact that there's only been one year in its more than 100-year history that there hasn't been a death. Absolutely shocking statistics. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, I, I do think that the Isle of Man in particular, it's, it's the most, for me, the most dangerous road race circuit in the world. Just a few weeks back there, we had an international event at home called the Northwest 200, which is an international road race with all the same top riders at it. We had basically an incident-free meeting, a week's racing. I think there was maybe something up to about half a dozen people slid off, but they got back up again, walked away, and it was a fantastic meeting. Uh, maybe 100,000 people in attendance. They loved it. Uh, the riders love it. They know the risks. Uh, it's not to say they're going in with their arms uh, up their back, being forced to do it by other people. They know the risks exactly. I've been involved with, with uh, the late Robert Dunlop for many, many years. Sadly, Robert lost his life uh, racing at the Northwest 200. And I know from the inside what it's like for those people, even after serious injuries and near misses, they just simply can't wait to get back on the bike again and get out racing. Mm. It's just something that uh, a particular breed of people love. Yeah, uh, I, I do love it. As I say, I have this love-hate relationship with it. To make it safe, it never will happen. The TT in particular is almost 38 miles long. And you're, you're wondering what way that I would say that we could maybe make it better. I would probably start by maybe saying that that's enough of sidecar racing at the Isle of Man TT. Yeah. I think the machines are too unstable for the, 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 the lumps and the bumps and the jumps that are around that 38-mile circuit. And I think that's something the organisers will have to take a long, hard look at. Yeah. 
I mean, like, like you say, how can you make it safer? You can take some of those obstacles out of the way. Essentially, these riders are, are riding at up to speeds of 200 miles per hour. At that speed, there is going to be a great amount of risk. Just before we let you go, so, so can Isle of Man TT races continue in its current form? I, I don't think so. I think they have got to take a serious look, either whether, uh, whether it's reducing the length of the races. Uh, you will never remove all the furniture, as we call it, around a 38-mile circuit. There will still be those walls and posts and trees. Uh, I, I honestly do think that it's maybe time to, to call a halt to sidecar racing. I think they're too unstable. I think they should be restricted to yeah. short-circuit, black-type racing. OK, Liam, thank you so much. Liam Beckett. MBE speaking to us there, and you will be speaking to an ex-British champion a bit later on this morning yeah, too. After eight o'clock this morning. Yes. Uh, it's seven twenty-three now. You're watching breakfast morning. If you've just joined us, let's take a look at the weather. Chris is with us this morning, and uh, there's a heat wave on the way. Yeah, something like that, Roger. Later in the week, we'll 